Hello, my name is Nora Clark. Today I will be discussing assessing heart sounds. Um, I got my lesson from Jarvis, 7th edition physical examination and health assessment. And I have my client here. Do you mind introducing yourself? Um, my name is Kiosha Myers, and my birthday is April 16, 2010. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, do I have permission to do the video recording of you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Today, um, I'm going to be discussing heart sounds and um, listening to her heart sounds. Um, we're going to, first we're going to just talk basically about the heart sounds. When um, listening to heart sounds, you make sure that you do the inspection first, and then you're gonna do palpation. And normally it would be percussion, but normally right now they're not really percussing the heart. The heart. Um, then we're gonna do the auscultation of the heart. Um, just so you know, you're listening for different heart sounds. There's a S1 heart sound um, and an S2 heart sound. The S2 heart sound is heard loudest at the base of your heart. And then the S1 sound is heard louder at the apex of your heart. Um, I'll just go into depth with that about the base and the apex. As you notice, the base, when uh, in reference to your heart, is the top of your heart. And then the apex is the lower tip of your heart. Um, the S1 sound that you're going to hear is going to be the closure of your AV valve, which is your mitral and your tricuspid valve. And um, the S2 sound is going to be the closure of the semilunar valve, which is the aortic and pulmonic valves. Um, sometimes you may also hear a splitting of the S2 sound, like when you um, inhale deeply. It can cause the aortic and the um, I can the aortic and the pneumonic valve to um, close at two different times, and it kind of throws off the closure sound. So you hear a splitting there. Um, in your book, it just refers back to um, when they're deep when they're taking that deep breath that the it says more on the right side of the heart and less on the left side, and it's just changing the um, thoracic pressure in the heart and it causes the S2 splitting. In reference to your heart, there are four points or five points, five main points that you listen to the heart. Um, and the way I remember it is a little phrase, H to men, or some people call it, all pigs eat too much. And they are the aortic pneumonic, earth's point, tricuspid, and the mitral. And the points, the aortic is located in the second intercostal space and left right sternal border. And then the pneumonic is on the second intercostal space and it's going to be the left sternal border. And then earth's point is the third intercostal space and then you have the fourth, but you skip down to the fifth intercostal space for the tricuspid. And then you go the same fifth intercostal space and over to the mid-cubicular line for the mitral area or the apex is where you hear the S1 sound loudest. Um, also, um, when you're listening to heart sounds, you may sometimes hear extra or sometimes called abnormal heart sounds. Um, it's the S3 is one of the abnormal heart sounds and um, S4 is another. Um, you hear those mainly in the mitral area and S3 is sometimes you hear it normally in young, young adults, growing children or women in their third trimester of pregnancy. 
and the um, S4 sound is going to be a low pitch vibration that you may hear at the end of um, diastole just before S1. Um, just to go back on that, I'm talking about heart sounds. Um, that S4 sound in adults, I mean older adults, sometimes you'll hear that just because they're older and their heart is a little older. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they have cardiac problems going on. Um, also, you may hear more systolic murmurs in older adults. That doesn't really mean that they have cardiovascular problems. Um, back to, let me backtrack just a little bit when I was talking about the, um, the apex of the heart. Just FYI, some more information. Um, in infants, when you're listening to that sound, it's going to be in the fourth intercostal space, and it's going to be lateral, the mid clavicular line. And then that's from infancy to about four years old. And then from four to six, you still going to listen to that fourth intercostal space, but it'll be more mid clavicular. And then from seven and up, that's when you'll start by listening. Well, you'll start listening to the fifth intercostal space, mid clavicular line. Okay, so that's a brief overview of um, the heart. Um, I went over with you assessing. When you're assessing and listening to the regular heart sounds, the S1, S2, you're going to listen with the diaphragm of the stethoscope, which is the um, larger area. But um, you're also going to listen for murmurs or the abnormal heart sounds, and you will listen with the bell or the desk and make sure that you have a little opening on your desk open on whichever side that you're listening. Um, also, when you're listening for S3 and 4, sometimes it may be kind of hard to hear, and it may be better for you to ask your patient to turn toward the left side and listen, and may um, you may hear it if it's there, if it's present. But I'm going to start on my assessment with my patient, um, first thing I'm going to do is ask her about her history, get some subjective information. Okay, Miss Kiyosha, I got my little paper here. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your cardiovascular history? Do you have any cardiovascular problems? No, ma'am. No. Okay. And what about your family history? Any family history or cardiovascular problems? My mother, she um, she had problems with the um, if you don't, you don't know exactly? No. Okay, but you think she had some problems, do you know particularly when, what time? When she was pregnant, she you had some cardiovascular, maybe some heart problems. Okay, I just know that we had some heart problems um, where her mother noted, and she didn't know exactly what, but her mother had some cardiovascular problems during pregnancy. Um, any? Are you having any chest pains or shortness of breath or? Um, Headaches, dizziness, anything like that right now? No, ma'am. No? Okay. Um. Okay. Any significant things you want to tell me about your history, health history? No. So I'm going to move on to my physical assessment of my client. And first I will start with inspection. Um, as you can see, we don't have a hospital bed, but we're going to try our best to inspect. Because when you're looking um, at the heart, you need to try to have your patient as flat as possible, especially for that. Um, you're going to be looking for the aortic impulse to see if there's any pulsation there with the chest. So I'm going to just try to recline this chair a little bit. 
From here, we would get down to the patient level, and we would be looking in the um, area, the mitral area, where the fifth, which is the fifth intercostal space. And sometimes, if you have a patient that's large chest or large breast, you may have to ask them to um, move some of the breast tissue just so you can get to the area. But you would just kind of look for the area, looking for a pulsation, and. Sometimes you may not see it, especially if the patient is larger, but more, more so on the smaller patients, you'll see that pulsation. But also you can um, feel for it. So you can just feel in that area. And I feel it. But if you, if you can't feel it and the patient's larger, you can ask them to roll over on their left side and kind of feel and you may feel it even a little better there. Rolling over to that left side just kind of um, brings the heart a little closer to the surface and makes it possible for you to hear. But after that, I would um, palpate. I'm going to touch the area up here a little bit. It may be a little uncomfortable, but I'm going to palpate. And here I'm feeling for any vibrations or thrills and I would do each area the second intercostal space let, just let me show you just in case you don't know how to find the intercostal space you would find that sternal notch there and you would count actually count your ribs you count one two and in between the second and third rib that's your second intercostal space and you would just palpate those areas then you go down to the um, the third intercostal space, which is considered herbs point, and then the fourth and the fifth is tricuspid um, near the sternal border, and then you go over mid clavicular. If you would, you would be able to, you would have the extra patient to lift their breast tissue. Can you do that for me? And um, feel that mid clavicular for any pulsation. And normally you wouldn't feel any pulsation there. Okay, that's my palpation. Now it's time to listen. And of course, when you're in the hospital bed, you'll be able to raise the bed to your level and won't be bending over, hurting your back so much. But I'm going to listen now to my patient. And if I need to, I will find my place again, but I kind of know where it is, the second intercostal space. I'm going to listen for that aortic heartbeat. And I go over to the left side for the pneumonic. Okay. And remember that I said that the S2 sound is heard loudest here. I'm going to go down to the third intercostal space, which is my herbs point. Excuse me. Okay. And my fourth and then my fifth. It's going to be my tricuspid. And Try to hear the apex. Okay, I hear it. And remember the apex is where I said you would hear the F1 sound the loudest. Okay, and then in that same order, I'm going to turn over to the bell and I'm going to listen to my murmurs or my extra heart sound. Listen for more murmurs, not saying that they are present. And then my second intercostal 
They say my track record, but I already listened to the A artist. They say my herbs point. I try custard. And here I would also ask my patient to roll over to her left side again so I can listen for the S3 or S4 sound. Can you roll to your left side for me? And remember when I said just asking the roll to the left side kind of brings the um it brings the heart to the surface a little more. And just to retract, I should have listened in for a full minute and told you what the apical pulse is. I'm gonna do that now. With the diaphragm. heart rate was regular right in rhythm and it was at 72 and the location was the apical pulse that I listened to and remember when you're listening to the apical pulse you're going to listen for one full minute um just to let you know when you do um hear that extra heart sound or murmurs it is something that you're really going to need to report to your doctor and get further testing done for that patient in case they're not diagnosed or if they're diagnosed, just so the doctor will be aware of what's going on with your patient. And you can come back up to the same thing. Um, just to give my patient a little teaching on cardiovascular health. Um, just so you know that you tell me you didn't know what condition your mother had. But um, just knowing that you have a family history, just so you will know you, that you will have be at risk due to family history for developing heart problems. Because the genetics is a condition, I mean a risk factor for cardiovascular problems. And um, also things that you can do to help prevent it is try to eat a healthy diet, not a lot of fried foods, try baked foods, or, um, Foods that's low in sodium, not a lot of sodium. You don't need all that. And um, you want to exercise, um, let's say three to five days a week, 30 minutes a day. Just try to get some vigorous exercise. And um, try to lift your caffeine intake. Keep a hold on your weight. Being obese can put you at risk for cardiovascular problems. Um, also, smoking or drinking, those are bad habits that can cause cardiovascular problems. Um, that pretty much is going to wrap up my assessment here. Do you have any questions about anything? No. No? Um, trying to recap, see if I missed anything. I don't think I did. I hope I did well and the assessment was good for you guys and it helped you guys. Um, that's it for now. Thank y'all.